1-800-321-8828. Is this president doing enough uh, to stop the development of nukes in Iran, especially now that the IAEA, which some people have said has been kind of tepid in the past, is now coming forward and saying it's a lot further along than they thought before, too. I mean, there's a lot of things to be concerned about. I think this could be the issue for the next president. And do we have someone in the White House now who's doing enough? I don't think he is. And I think right now we need to get somebody in who will really make sure that they take this threat seriously. The number is 1-800-321-8828, one 800 Three two one eight eight two eight here on the Rita Cosby Show, and now let's go to Chris. You know, Devito with Iran one eighty. Um, you know, when you look at this, Chris, and you look at the dynamics, it's a big concern. Well, of course it is, Rita, and I'm you know I'm I'm very happy to be back with you to speak about this issue. I, and I'm so glad too. You know, when I saw this, I said I got to get Chris on because you care so much about this issue, and I think it, it is extremely concerning. And I think the American public needs to really realize what the dynamics are, not just for you know Israel, um, but also the United States bringing in you know if it goes after one of our allies, what what what's what's the next step for us? Certainly, well, I mean this is probably the most significant national security issue that's going to face uh, the president, you know, in the wake of the 2012 elections, whether it is the current president or, you know, we have a new president come 2012. Um, I think one of the interesting things that was revealed um, during the Republican debate is that there is a striking amount of unanimity um, across party lines about what the threat posed by Iran is and the course of action that the United States needs to take to prevent, from acquiring, to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. Um, you know, I think we're so accustomed to uh, deep, deep partisanship and deep divisions on core issues um, in this country, but I, I think that this genuinely is one where the, the divisions are, for the most part, skin deep. But, and you think, you know, when you say skin deep, what do you mean by that, and, and what do you think needs to change? Well, I think, you know, given the nature of the kind of the political season upcoming, um, we're going to see kind of attacks and kind of recriminations thrown both ways that don't necessarily reflect genuine differences between the political parties, or the president and his, his uh, would-be Republican opponent. Um, I think, you know, that the leading Republican candidates on the days um, in South Carolina on Saturday, you know, came to the table with a set of propositions that I think are broadly agreed to by people within the national security establishment, um, by people at the top levels of both political parties who are thinking about these issues seriously. Um, you know, and that includes the full range of possible courses of action, um, everything from enhanced uh, you know, uh, economic sanctions to the possible threat of war. Um, I think you know, that the threat of force is always a useful diplomatic tool at the very least. And I don't think it's anything that any of the serious candidates have taken off the table. Well, and that's what I want to ask you, too. When, when you hear the, the, uh, those allegations, obviously Ron Paul doesn't really talk about that, so that's a whole different ballgame. Sure. Um, but, but most of the candidates, as you said, even talk about this. Newt talked about taking out of the scientists. Sure. What do you think of the approach, just in general, not, not getting into politics, but just the thought of, are there more covert things that we can be doing in general, Chris? Well, you know, there are a range of things. I mean, the, the things that Newt Gingrich described are things that are, you know, have been engaged in um, over the past several years. I mean, it's not clear um, who exactly has been executing these these actions, um, whether it's things like the Stuxnet virus that we discussed briefly last time I was on, or it's things like the assassination of Iranian nuclear scientists. Um, just this past weekend, one of the foremost individuals within Iran's uh, ballistic missiles program died in a an accident that Iran is blaming on either the U.S. or Israel. Um, so I think that even if we're not hearing about and there's not credit claiming being done for certain you know sets of actions, um, there is certainly a kind of shadow conflict that is occurring, and you know real um, actions are being taken by the United States and its allies to at least slow the Iranian program down. Do you believe, Chris, that there are some covert, as you're talking about, uh, suddenly this guy passes away in an accident? Um, do you think that there'll be a number of them suddenly pass away, well, uh, we, you know, in an accident who are playing a role in this Iranian nuke program? Well, we've had three or four individuals over the past two years who've, you know, met uh, rather grisly ends, um, you know, and it's not clear 
why or how that those events came to to, pe- to pass, um, but I think it is widely suspected, and I think with you know reasonably so that um, you know the cloak and dagger kind of wings of the United, United States national security establishment has been uh, key in those developments occurring. Yeah, it, I think that there's some serious, serious questions. When you go back and you go, oh, you know what, that happened. That, you know, I don't believe in coincidences, especially when it comes to these kind of stakes. Do you? Yes. No, I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, when, you know, bombs are attached to the sides of individuals' cars in Tehran, um, you know, it's reasonable to suspect that, you know, there is more pur- there's purposeful action being taken there. And real quick, um, and we're talking to Chris DeVito, everybody. He's the director of outreach for Iran 180. Um, do you think we'll be able to figure, get a handle of this? I mean, the latest report by the International Atomic Energy Commission saying essentially uh, that we are, what you know, looking at maybe two to three years away for Iran. Some believe it's even sooner. Do you think we'll be able to stop this? Well, I mean, I think, you know, there are still – a range of actions that are on the table that can reasonably be pursued by the United States, um, either you know in concert with our allies and the international commu- or, uh, community and or unilaterally, um, that can really raise the cost of Iran's program. Um, I think that this includes everything from you know the sanctioning of Iran's central bank, which was uh, has been discussed recently, though the Obama administration seems hesitant to pursue that. Um, you know, to continued covert action. Um, I think, you know, that one of the things that we've seen in the past is that even the U.S. has sometimes been reluctant to pursue sanctions unilaterally um, because they think that we think that it will be more effective with a concert of nations um, participating, and that's certainly true. Um, But I think that we've demonstrated, you know, it was demonstrated during the George W. Bush administration, it's been demonstrated during the Obama administration, that leading on sanctions can, you know, bring others along uh, in our wake, even if they were initially reluctant participants. So I think that, you know, the indication has, you know, always been that Russia and China are the hardest uh, international parties to bring along on these actions. But there are some positive signs contained within the IAEA report, namely that Russia was um, cooperative in the uh, gathering of and dissemination of the intelligence some key elements of the intelligence that were contained in that IAEA report. Which is interesting, although they also are playing a role helping, too, from what we're hearing. It's sort of a double-edged sure. sword. Sure. Um, Chris, thank you so much. Please keep us posted. Uh, and anytime, come on the show. I think this is such an important issue, and I think Americans really need to realize the implications of what could be at stake around the corner uh, if we do not take appropriate action. We really right. appreciate you being with us. They absolutely do, and I always appreciate you coming on the show and then, I'm always happy to talk about these issues. Thanks so much.